When do we not repair a pump? When the cost is 75% of a new. You just gotta kinda pick a number where if it's a $10,000 repair or $12,000 for a new pump, go new with a new pump. It's all about economics. You gotta make it whatever is financially viable. Let's say like, you know, the housing's broken, you can get a new housing. If you need a new port plate, you can get a new port plate. If you need new pistons, you can get new pistons, right? There's one pump, is it an F1? that you just, that's small, is it? Yeah, there's certain Parker pumps that will not fail gently. If it's anything more than a reseal, by the time you do pistons, barrel, bearings, you're at 75, 80% of a new one. Okay. And they're aluminum housing, so they score real easy. Can they? No point in fixing it. Yeah, and then I just remember people saying gold cups are pretty much always more economical to repair. Yes. The Gold Cup series will fail gently, I guess. Uh, what will happen is you can have a charge pump wear out so your control's not working as good. It's also a much more expensive pump, so mm -hmm. it's built better. Generally, the lower end pumps that are running in the mid range, like everything else, they're built economical. So if the parts cost this much and that's that much, there's no point in fixing it. What are you doing on this? What is this that you're doing? This is a. TV plus 270. It's massive. There's the shaft. That thing's huge. I know. But that, look at the shaft. That's the whole shaft. So there's three uh, splined areas. Is that what that's called? Spline? Yeah. So, this so why is there three spline? So this is your drive that you hook up to your electric motor, diesel engine, or coupler to drive it. This is where your barrel will sit to drive the rotating group. And this is your rear drive to put an auxiliary pump or whatever the hell you want on the back of it. Did Mike fix the, it's called a control guide, I learned. Yes. Oh, it's right here. Is this it? Yeah. He did fix it. He did fix it? Yeah. Uh, when they remove and disassemble that part, they apply heat to a certain part and afterwards it constricts that size a little so you can't put in the intermoving part so I set it up and I take a little cut towards the end where it was constricted it makes it happy happy good <laughs> I heard you got caught in the snow caught in the snow I live out in the country yeah a lot of trouble under certain conditions and then now this goes in there nice and free wow. oh, yes Good morning, Lloyd. I heard you fixed um, the control with the screws that broke off. Oh, the pump that had the compensator bolt sheared off that, inside it? Yeah. Yes. Is the compensator the same as a control? Uh, basically, yeah. Okay. What'd you do to fix it? Do you use that tool that you got new? No, that's for getting taps out. This was just sheared off bolts. I just took a sharp pick and gave it a couple that's taps. That's what I tried to do with my nail. Didn't work. <laughs> what nail? On my hand. She literally looked like this. <laughs> I was like, maybe I could just out. spit it. That's I could pretty much what you gotta do. You just gotta get it tapped and back it out a little bit. Then I just grab it yeah. and send it out. Okay. My first time building these you know, big ones, I guess. Really? Do you like it? Yeah, it's the same as the small ones. They're just everything's just heavier. Uh, <laughs> so it's a little bit harder to maneuver. About. We've been following these pumps. Okay. And what do you know about them? Uh, well, one had something wrong with a control guide. One, the compensator got snapped off. That's all I know. You're testing them. The uh, proper settings. Okay. I called back in a second. So do you set the settings? Yep. It's so. like uh, pressure and then it's Okay. We adjust them here, so when we go out, we're going to put a tag saying that's what it was set to. Gotcha. Um, and will you have them all done today? Yeah. Nice. I'll have them done this morning. <laughs> wow. Come on. Overachiever here. <laughs> you broke something. What'd you break? I broke a tap. What does that even mean? See? Let's Luckily, see? it's sticking above. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sticking above. Yeah. So the pick actually, I could actually unscrew it and get it out. 
so we got lucky. What were you heating up in your pan over there? Seals. Is it water or oil? Oil. Yeah, Are they specific or special seals or something? Yes, polymite. Polymite? Yeah. High heat, very dense, and uh, they last a long time. Do they have a loaded spring inside? A loaded O-ring, yeah. Loaded no, O-ring? No, no spring, just a uh, O-ring. Okay. Yep. What does loaded O-ring mean? It's backed by uh, another material uh, to strengthen it. You ready? Yep. It's coming. This is the excitement. <laughs> it's building up. <laughs> the anticipation. Damn. There we go. We did it. We got it out. That is a broken tap. But it, it keeps on uh, moving, mm -hmm. rotating, so you can't go up to the next size because it's, once you start to bite into it, it just spins. Mm -hmm. It won't work. But it was worth a shot. We tried. We tried. Now what? Uh, we're just going to see about uh, ordering uh, a new one. <laughs> good morning, Russell. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Yourself? What are you up to? I'm pretty good. Uh, testing this uh, vein pump for Damien there. Okay. Is it a single? No. Double. Double? C6 CCM. C6 CCM. Get a six gallon cartridge here, six gallon cartridge here at 1200 RPM. Haven't run it yet, so just about to fire it up. Okay, go for it. What are you looking for? I'm uh, just looking at how much flow there is. So there should be about 12 gallons a minute. It looks like I'm getting 13. Yeah, we're getting bonus. <laughs> What does that do? So right now I'm uh, increasing the resistance on the flow, in turn increasing the pressure. This is the that. gallons per minute, this is liters per minute. 1,000 PSI. 1,500. 2,000. Yeah, it looks good. Hello, Willie. Can you tell us what you're doing? I'm a uh, gold cup torque limiter we sold to a customer, and it didn't work for him. Now, they send it back to us, and we send him another one, a brand new one, and it worked fine. That one worked fine. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that all the parts are there as they should be in here, and reassembling it, making sure everything's clean, reassembled. And then I made a mock-up here because it has to be assembled to, to this. And then what I would do is take everything off and then we use an existing pump and then we're gonna see if this works. And then are these like your old notes from the past? Yeah, th those are my old service sheets and I have a little notes. I've been here so long that I, this is my uh, old book. I like now, it. It's on the computer too, yeah. but I make shortcut notes and yeah. little, little hints for myself Good. and whoever is gonna work on this. What is this? It's to measure the difference from the top of this shaft to this spacer. Okay. And then the top of the shaft to this block. So you have a common and non-common measurement. So you can find your difference between your old shaft and your new shaft. Then you can get a distance, right? So for this instance, it's uh, six thou. And then I could take my old shims out, and I know that my one shaft is smaller, so I need to add six thou. But if it was reversed, I'd have to take out six thou for my shims. Okay. So kind of similar, like what you do on the gold cups and stuff like that. No, the no? gold cups, more like the P1s. These must be the eight finished. Change the rotation on all of them. See you in the last video.